The Life Cycle of Salmon. What are salmon? Salmon are fish. Fish are vertebrates. A vertebrate is an animal that has a backbone. A backbone is a row of bones in the middle of an animal's back. Like most fish, salmon are bony fish. Bony fish have hard skeletons. And here's some example of salmon. They're a bony fish. Also, clownfish, eels, goldfish, most other fish are also bony fish. Keeping their cool. Fish are cold-blooded animals. The body temperatures of cold-blooded animals change as the temperatures of their surroundings change. A salmon that is in cool water has a lower body temperature than a salmon that's in warm water. And salmon relations. Salmon belong to a family of fish called Salmonidae. And that's probably a terrible pronunciation, but Salmonidae. Other members of this family including, they include grayling, whitefish, char, and trout. Salmon and trout are closely related. Scientists do not always agree on whether trout are actually a species of salmon or not. Freshwater and saltwater. The natural place where an animal lives is called its habitat. Some fish live in freshwater habitats, such as rivers and lakes. Other fish live in saltwater habitats, such as oceans. Freshwater contains very little salt, whereas saltwater contains a lot of salt. Most freshwater fish cannot survive in saltwater, and most saltwater fish cannot survive in freshwater. Fantastic fish. Salmon are found in North America, Europe, and Asia. Salmon are different from most other fish because they spend part of their lives in freshwater and part of their lives in saltwater. Young salmon live in freshwater rivers and lakes, whereas most fully grown salmon live in oceans. An important stop. Salmon cannot swim directly from freshwater to saltwater. They must first sw swim through estuaries. An estuary forms where a river meets an ocean. In an estuary, there is a mixture of freshwater and saltwater. The mixture of water helps a salmon's body adjust to salt water before it enters an ocean. Salmon also stay in estuaries to adjust to fresh water before they return to their freshwater habitats. Before entering oceans, salmon swim through estuaries such as the Umpqua River estuary in Oregon. Fresh water forever. Some salmon are landlocked. Landlocked salmon live in lakes and rivers that do not connect to oceans. These fish spend their entire lives in freshwater habitats. The bodies of water in which they live are often deep and cold. Landlocked salmon, such as this kokanee, are also known as lake form salmon. We have those up in Waldo Lake here in Oregon. So salmon species, there are eight main species or types of salmon. Atlantic, Chinook, Chum, Pink, Sockeye, Coho, Steelhead, and Masu. Atlantic salmon live part of their lives in freshwater and part of their lives in the Atlantic Ocean. The other seven species make up a group called Pacific salmon. These salmon live part of their lives in freshwater and part of their lives in the Pacific Ocean. So there are fewer Atlantic salmon than there are any other salmon species in North America. Chinook salmon are the largest salmon species. They can grow up to five feet long and weigh 125 pounds. Chum salmon sometimes have multicolored bodies. Pink salmon are the smallest salmon species. They're about 21 inches. 
and they often weigh less than five pounds. Sockeye salmon are also known as red salmon because their bodies turn this bright red color. Coho salmon are commonly known as silver side salmon because the sides of their body are silver. Steelhead salmon are also called coastal rainbow trout. They are more closely related to salmon than to trout, however. And masu salmon are also called Japanese salmon because they live mainly in waters around Japan. Salmon's body. A salmon has a sleekly shaped body. This shape <clears throat> allows a salmon to move easily through water. The salmon swims using body parts called fins. It has strong muscles in its body. The muscles control the fins. They also give the salmon a lot of power. Salmon are strong swimmers. A salmon smells with nares. Nares are like nostrils. And different salmon species have gums of different colors. And the Chinook that we're raising have black gums. Gill covers are flaps of skin that protect a salmon's gills. And a salmon has a pair of pectoral fins right at their chest. A salmon has a dorsal fin on its back, and yes, so do sharks. A salmon has a pelvic fin on the underside of its body. And near its tail, a salmon has a strong anal fin on the underside of its body. And this is actually super helpful to the females. It helps where, you know, the eggs come out. And a sa salmon's tail fin is also called a caudal fin. A salmon has a small adipose fin between the dorsal fin and the caudal fin. This particular fin, though, is a fin that if it's a hatchery fish, it will be missing that. So a little bit about gills. This is a close-up of their gills. Great gills. Like all fish, salmon have body parts called gills. Gills allow fish to breathe underwater. Water enters a salmon's body through its mouth and exits through its gills. As water flows through the gills, the gills take in oxygen. Oxygen is a gas found in air and water that all animals must breathe to survive. And then body armor. This is a close-up of the scales. A salmon's body is covered with tough, thin scales. Scales protect a salmon when it rubs against objects such as jagged rocks. The scales are coated with a layer of mucus or slimy substance. Mucus helps the salmon move its body easily through water. What is a life cycle? A life cycle is a series of changes that every animal goes through. Early in its life cycle, an animal is born or hatches from an egg. The animal grows and changes until it becomes mature. A mature animal can reproduce or make babies with another animal of the same species. And all salmon have a similar life cycle. Lifespans. A life cycle is not the same as a lifespan. A lifespan is the length of time an animal is alive. Different species of salmon have different lifespans. For example, coho salmon live for two to four years, whereas sam uh, Chinook salmon live for three to six years. Atlantic salmon usually have longer lifespans than Pacific salmon do. Most Atlantic salmon live for about six years. The life cycle of salmon. Salmon begin their life cycles inside eggs as embryos or developing animals. Tiny salmon called alevins hatch from the eggs. Alevins cannot swim. After about a month, Alevins grow into fry that can swim and find food. Some species of fry develop par marks or spots. These fry are known as par. When fry and par are ready to leave their freshwater homes, they are called smolts. Smolts swim in saltwater habitats where they continue to grow. 
fully grown salmon return to fresh water where they become mature. Eggs and embryos. A female salmon lays eggs in a red or nest. She uses her tail to dig a red in the gravel at the bottom of a stream or a river. The eggs blend in with the gravel and stay hidden from hungry animals. Fresh water washes over the eggs, keeping them cool and clean. So here, salmon eggs have to stay clean and cool to keep the embryos inside of them healthy. And the river does that for them. Helpful trees. Trees help keep salmon eggs healthy. The roots of trees that grow along rivers and streams stop soil from sliding into the water. As a result, the water flowing around salmon eggs stays clean. Trees also provide shade, which keeps the eggs from becoming too warm. Growing on the inside. Salmon eggs are small and soft. The eggs are reddish orange in color. Each egg contains an embryo. There is an, a yolk sac attached to each embryo. The yolk sac holds yolk, which is the embryo's food. As the embryo grows, it develops two large black eyes that can be seen through the egg. Most embryos grow inside their eggs for one or two months. Some embryos take longer to grow, however. Embryos in very cold water may stay inside their eggs for up to five months. A dangerous world. Salmon eggs face many dangers, even in the safety of a red. If an animal disturbs the red, the delicate embryos inside it might, may die. Fish, such as trout, search for salmon reds and eat the eggs. Salmon sometimes make reds in shallow water that dries up when the warm weather arrives. Embryos cannot survive in eggs that are not underwater. And birds, such as ducks, and fish, such as trout, eat salmon eggs when they find them. Alevins. Many alevins hatch from their eggs in early spring. Alevins do not look like adult salmon. Their bodies are only about one inch long. They do not have fins, and they cannot swim. They use their tiny tails to push themselves short distances through water. Laying low. Many predators eat alevins. Predators are animals that hunt and eat other animals. Fish and birds are alevin predators. Alevins keep safe by staying in their reds. It is difficult for predators to see alevins among the gravel in their reds. Sack lunch. An alevin does not need to look for food to eat. It gets all the nutrients it needs from its yolk sac. The yolk sac is attached to the underside of the body. The alevin grows quickly as it gets nutrients from its egg sac. So long, red. After four to six weeks, an alevin has used up all the yolk inside its yolk sac. By the time the alevin runs out of yolk, its fins have grown enough to allow it to swim out of its red and to find food. When a young salmon leaves the red in which it hatched, it begins the next stage of its life cycle. And here is a Chinook alevin. This is more what ours look like, but notice this is the coho, Atlantic alevin, and a sockeye alevin. They're all just a tiny bit different. Fry and par. When young salmon swim out of their reds to find food, they are called fry. Fry have fins, teeth, and scales. They are twice as big as alevins. Fry must eat a lot so they can continue to grow. At first, most fry eat plankton, which are tiny plants and animals floating in water. As fry continue to grow, they start to eat larger foods such as insects and fish eggs. Swim bladders, and here you'll see in the diagram the swim bladder. When fry begin to swim, they use their swim bladders for the first time. A swim bladder is a balloon-like part inside a fish's body that allows the fish to float. 
fish use their swim bladders to move up and down in water. To move toward the water's surface, a fish takes air into the swim bladder through its mouth. When the fish lets out the air out of the swim bladder through its gills, it moves downward through the water. Safety schools. Birds and large fish often eat fry. One way fry stay safe from predators is by swimming together. Hundreds of fry of the same species may form a school or a group of fish. Swimming in a school helps keep fry safe. Predators may confuse the group of small fish for one large fish and leave the fry alone. Protective par marks. When most fry are a few months old, they become par. Par have dark oval par marks on their bodies. Par marks are camouflage that help hide par among rocks and weeds in their freshwater habitats. Animals with camouflage have colors, patterns, or textures on their bodies that help them blend in with their surroundings. Some fry species, such as pink salmon, do not develop par marks. They are never called par. Smolts. When fry and par are ready to leave their freshwater habitats, they are called smolts. Most smolts are between one and six inches long and weigh less than four ounces. Smolts look like small adult salmon. If they had par marks, the marks have faded. Their bodies are now pale silver color. This color provides camouflage in ocean waters. On the move, smolts migrate from fresh water to salt water. An animal that migrates travels from one place to another for a specific purpose. A smolt migrates to the ocean to find food. Some species, including chum salmon smolts, migrate during their first few months of life. Other species, including Atlantic salmon smolts, live in freshwater for up to three years before they migrate. Chinook is about one to two. Following the current, smolt migrate towards salt water by following the water's current. A current is the natural movement of water in a certain direction. Currents in river flow toward oceans. The smolt follows the water's current until it enters an estuary. And that's what this is right here. Estuary life. Smolts live in estuaries for weeks. Before entering the ocean, smolts must become used to salt water. There is plenty of food in most estuaries, so smolts quickly grow larger and stronger. Estuaries sometimes flood or overflow. If an estuary floods before the smolts are ready to live in salt water, they can be swept into salt water too soon and die. Into the ocean. When a smolt enters the ocean, it is a salmon. While living in salt water, salmon may swim over 1,000 miles out into the ocean in search of prey. Prey are animals that predators hunt and eat. Salmon find a wide variety of prey in oceans using their senses of smell and sight. Salmon find fish such as herring, crustaceans such as shrimp, and larger animals such as squid. Salmon grow rapidly after entering saltwater habitats. They are soon fully grown. How long in the ocean? Different salmon species spend different lengths of time in the ocean. Masu salmon often spend just one winter in the ocean. These Chinook salmon may live in the ocean for up to seven years, however. Out of sight. To avoid predators, fully grown salmon have a type of camouflage called countershading. Animals with countershading have dark backs and light bellies. Having countershading makes salmon hard to see in deep ocean waters. A predator swimming below a salmon may look up and not notice the salmon. The salmon's pale belly and sides help it blend in with the sunny surface of the water. A predator swimming above the salmon may not see it because the salmon's dark back blends in with the dark ocean floor below. New predators. 
In addition to having many prey in oceans, salmon also have many predators. Ocean animals that eat salmon include dolphins, sea lions, seals, sharks, and whales. Seabirds swoop down from the sky and catch salmon that swim near the water's surface. On the run. After spending between one and seven years growing in the ocean, fully grown salmon are nearly mature. Before salmon can mate, they must journey back to areas where they hatched. This long, hard journey is called a salmon run. Many salmon begin their salmon run in autumn. It may take months to complete the run. Back to the estuary. Fully grown salmon travel back to the same estuaries they used when they entered salt water as smolts. Scientists believe that salmon can tell which estuary to enter by its smell. In the same way that smolts waited in estuaries to adjust to salt water, fully grown salmon stay in estuaries until their bodies adjust to fresh water. The return trip. During a salmon run, salmon must travel upstream or against the current. Swimming against a current makes it difficult for salmon to move forward. While they are migrating upstream, salmon stop eating and use all their energy to complete their difficult journey. By the time the salmon finish the salmon run, they are mature. In species such as sockeye, the snouts of the males become sharply hooked during a salmon run. And super swimmers. While swimming upstream, salmon use their strong tails and other fins to push their bodies against the current. They thrust themselves over obstacles such as logs and rocks. Salmon can even leap up waterfalls. Predators such as bears, birds, and otters hunt along the rivers and streams where the salmon are traveling. As the salmon leap into the air, these animals catch them. Ready to spawn. Before salmon reproduce, their bodies change color for the final time in their life cycles. To attract partners, salmon turn a variety of bright colors as they travel. Their brightly colored bodies may also frighten away other fish. By the time salmon reach their spawning grounds or the places where they began their lives, they look very different than when they, than they looked in the ocean. The bodies of mature sockeye salmon change color, but their heads do not. Readying the red. Salmon reproduce by spawning. To spawn, a female salmon uses her tail to dig a shallow red. She then lays her eggs in the red. The movements of the female makes while she digs her red attract male salmon. A male swims into the red and fertilizes the eggs. With a swish of her tail, the female covers the fertilized eggs with gravel. If the female has more eggs to lay, she may dig more reds. The same male will fertilize those eggs as well. The end of the life cycle. Once the salmon run and spawning are complete, the salmon are hungry and tired. Salmon may stay near their eggs to protect them, but the salmon die long before the alvins hatch. The bodies of the dead salmon decay gradually or break down in the water around their eggs. And this decaying salmon, they add nutrients to the water, which makes the water healthy for eggs, alvins, and fry, and actually all the plants around there too. Exceptions to the rule. Some steelhead and Atlantic salmon do not die after spawning. These fish rest and then swim back to their saltwater habitats. They may grow very large in the oceans. Some of these salmon are able to return to their spawning grounds a second or even third time. And the bodies of Celts or Atlantic salmon that have spawned and then returned to saltwater are darker than the bodies of the other Atlantic salmon. Dangers to salmon. People's actions threaten salmon populations. A population is the number, the total number of one species living in an area. Some people overfish salmon. 
Overfishing occurs when people take too many of one species of fish from one, an area. In these areas, the number of salmon caught each year is greater than the number of alevins that hatch each year. As a result, salmon populations are getting smaller. Fish farms. People cultivate salmon on fish farms. To cultivate salmon means to raise them and sell them as food. Fish farms are made up of underwater cages that hold huge numbers of salmon. Species of large cultivated salmon sometimes escape their cages and eat all the prey in the habitats of smaller wild salmon. Escaped salmon may also introduce diseases to wild salmon. The wild salmon can become sick and may even die. Dirty waters. People also destroy salmon habitats. Some hab salmon habitats are destroyed when people clear land. To clear land means to remove the trees and other plants from it. When land is cleared, a lot of soil slides into waterways and makes the water muddy. Alevins and fry cannot survive in muddy water. People also pollute the water in which salmon live. To pollute water means to make it dirty. Polluted water makes salmon sick. Salmon may even die because of polluted water in their habitats. Blocked roots. People build dams along rivers to control the flow of water. Salmon that use the rivers as migration routes cannot reach their spawning grounds. These salmon do not lay eggs before they die. Salmon populations get smaller because fewer eggs are laid each year. And a salmon may be injured or killed if it swims through a dam's turbines or machinery. Helping Salmon Conservation groups are working hard to protect salmon and their habitats. The people who belong to conservation groups are trying to make governments and other people aware of the threats that salmon face. These groups have convinced the governments in the United States and Canada to pass laws to create programs to help protect salmon and their habitats. Climbing Ladders Some dam builders have designed fish ladders such as the one shown here on the right. Fish ladders provide salmon with roots around the dams. Strong salmon are able to use fish ladders. Weaker salmon are not, however. Some people catch weaker salmon and carry them around the dams. Other people are working to stop building dams along salmon migration routes. Hatching a plan. Fish hatcheries are human-made places where fish eggs develop and hatch. Fish hatcheries help increase the number of salmon in the wild. They release young salmon into the wild to help increase salmon populations. Only a small number of salmon can be released into a habitat, however, and there can be no other salmon already in that habitat. If there are too many sa salmon in one habitat, there will not be enough food for all of them. How can you help? Brainstorm ways that you can help salmon. If you live near a salmon habitat, consider starting a cleanup project in the rivers and streams in your area. If you live far from natural salmon habitats, you can still help by cleaning up nearby ponds and streams. Water flows from one waterway to another. Your efforts may help salmon that live far away.